So I really want to know, what do you make of this deal? Is it a win all round? Well, I'm not the architect of the Northern Ireland <laughs> Protocol. <laughs> no, I'm going back further you. than that. <laughs> no, I mean, it's very interesting. Um, Monsieur Barnier, who was the chief negotiator mm. for the European Union, clever guy. No question about it. You know, he was always with Brexit playing a long term game of chess. Mm. And by using Northern Ireland, he got Mrs. May into a checkmate position. Yes. You know, we accepted the principle that because we'd left the European Union and goods would be crossing that border, that it could mean the introduction of a hard border which would threaten everything that had been in place for the previous 20 years under the Belfast Good Friday. Agreement, and we accepted that premise from day one, and he had us. And so she put forward this deal. Parliament wouldn't wear it. She got kicked out after the European elections, and Boris then faced this difficulty: What do I do? What do I do? Mm. Do I risk the whole of the UK being caught up in customs union, single market rules, or do I just cynically jettison Northern Ireland? That's what he chose to do. It would have been nice if he'd been a bit more honest about it. Yeah. And so the situation, I mean, literally, it's been unbearable there since the beginning of 2020. Um, and now, but now we're supposed to celebrate. Now this, I mean, the Times, Brexit breakthrough. Well, this is what I said earlier. Yeah. Is it just Northern Ireland protocol fatigue, which has forced the so, whole media to get on board so, with this? I mean, clearly there's a lot to celebrate. I mean, we can now, I mean, can you believe it? We can now have the same cocktail sausages in <laughs> Belfast and London. I mean, this is the enormity of what's been achieved. I remember, I remember when Boris Johnson went to Brussels mm. as Prime Minister in October 2019. And my lawyer and I sat up through the night, going through the document and realising that what Boris was saying about this oven-ready deal that sold all of our problems actually wasn't true. And the next day, I tried my best in Brussels, I came back and did a press conference in London and I explained the problems that were there, the inconsistencies, including what would happen to Northern Ireland. Yeah. And do you know what? For one of the first times in my political career, Nobody was interested. Did you have a solution Nobody then, though, Nigel? Uh, well, it was yes, absolutely. We should have threatened to leave with no deal. We might then have had a we, we might then have had a proper negotiation. But the point I'm making is, even though what I was saying was valid and correct, and I had a relatively powerful position at the time, yeah. no one in these newspapers wanted to know. It was Brexit fatigue, and this is exactly the same. We will discover that yes, of course, some of the idiocies have been removed. Mm. Maybe we've got some latitude over parts of VAT or excise duties. Yeah. But the idea we have a veto over EU law is for the birds. So that you, mean, birds. you mean the storm on to break, as they're the calling storm it? Break. I mean, it was very interesting. The most instructive part of yesterday was the press conference mm. in Windsor, when the RTE, the, 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 the Irish broadcasters, asks a very specific question about the role of the European Court of Justice. Sunak ignores it completely. Yeah. Von der Leyen responds immediately mm. and instinctively that the ECJ is the final ultimate arbiter of any dispute. So we will find, as we go through the legal documents in the next few days, that some of the claims that Rishi has made are, let's be kind, exaggerated. Right. But no one's going to care. No one's going to care because we've reached this point, everyone's happy, it's better than it was and we move on, there'll be no Tory rebellion, Ireland will be stuck inside a system where it still has to accept EU rules, uh, we'll have a Labour government in 18 months' time who won't just accept EU rules for Northern Ireland, they'll accept them for the whole of the United Kingdom. Uh, and still, whichever way you look at it, that initial acceptance of the mm. Barnier premise is, is actually endangering our ability to genuinely break... So when